In this video, we're going to talk about polarity. So the first thing we have to do is define what polarity is. And polarity depends on the electronegativity differences. So a nonpolar bond, we're going to start with talking about polar and nonpolar bonds. A nonpolar bond has a difference in electronegativity that's less than 0.5. So electronegativity difference less than 0 0.5. For a polar bond, you have an electronegativity difference that's equal to or greater than 0 0.5. So electronegativity difference equal to or greater than 0 0.5. So what we're going to be looking at are the difference in electronegativity values for two atoms forming a bond. So we have two atoms, they formed a bond, and remember the electronegativity is a measure of how much each atom is going to pull on those electrons. So if it's an even pull, so if there's a very small difference in electronegativities, that is considered a nonpolar bond. If there's an unequal pull, so one's going to pull more than the other, so there's a greater electronegativity difference, that's when we end up with a polar bond. So let's actually apply this to a couple of examples. So when we actually want to calculate polar what, or determine whether or not something is a polar bond, we have to use the electronegativity differences. Now, your table of electronegativity values can be found on the bottom of your periodic table. So it's the bottom right-hand corner, and we're only going to be looking at nonmetals for this. So in that table are the electronegativity values for our nonmetals. Our first example is carbon and sulfur. So if I look up carbon and sulfur on my table, I can see that the electronegativity value for carbon is 2.5, and the electronegativity value for sulfur is also 2.5. So if I subtract those two numbers, 2.5 minus 2.5, I get a difference of zero, which means that this is a nonpolar bond. Carbon and sulfur have an exactly equal pull on the electrons in that bond. My second example, phosphorus and selenium, I'm going to look for those on my table here. So phosphorus has an electronegativity value of 2.1, and selenium has an electronegativity value of 2.4. So I don't want any negatives, so I'm going to do 2.4 minus 2.1, and that gets me 0 0.3 for my difference. This is also less than 0 0.5, so this is also a nonpolar bond. And then finally, I have silicon and bromine. So if I look up those two values on my table, so silicon is 1.8, bromine is 2.8. So if I subtract 2.8 minus 1.8, I get a difference of exactly 1. This value is bigger than 0 0.5, so that makes it a polar what that means is the atom with the greater electronegativity value is going to pull more on those electrons. So it's going to be an uneven distribution of the electrons. They're not going to be right in the middle of that bond. They're actually going to be pulled closer to bromine since bromine has the greater electronegativity value. If your difference comes out to exactly 0.5, then it is also considered a polar compound. 